I want to uh, speak about the birth of Christ, the birth of the Saviour. You and I need a Saviour because of our sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is why the Lord Jesus Christ had to be born of a virgin. He had to be born so that he would take upon himself a body. Now here we see God taking upon himself a body. We see Jesus, who was made little lower the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honour, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. And so the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and for me because of our sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So what do you need to do to be in heaven, to receive forgiveness for your sins? You need to come in repentance toward God, that is, a change of mind, simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and your soul be saved. That's guaranteed. God has promised to all those who have called upon the name of the Lord, they'll be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So let's look now at the birth of Christ. Luke chapter 2, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This taxing was made uh, was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with uh, Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. In other words, they were engaged at this point in our language. She was great with child. In other words, she was heavily pregnant, we would say. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord, Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. So here we see the birth of Christ, the only sinless man that ever walked the face of the earth is the Christ. That is, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's the one that you've got to come to know as your Saviour. Otherwise, he'll be your judge. Now, God wants to save your soul, this other, my friend. The only way he can save you is if you put your faith in the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is willing and able to save all those who will call upon his precious name for salvation. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. If you want safety, if you want protection, 
You have to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend, because the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. In other words, they suppress the truth, they hold the truth down. So we've got to understand we are guilty of sin before the Lord. But God, in his love, mercy and grace, wants to save your soul this afternoon. And the only way he can save our soul is if we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The one who loved us unto death, even the death of the cross. Cursed is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. But you and I can be saved if we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Chris was asked a long time ago, what must I do to be saved? The simple answer was, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Very simple. That's why most people are missing out on God's salvation. They won't come to the Lord Jesus Christ for their salvation. They won't believe upon him. They won't come in repentance toward God. They're too proud to come and admit the fact, yes, I realize that I'm a sinner. Just admit that to God. Don't worry about a priest or a pastor, anyone here on earth. Go straight to God, my friend. And admit the fact that you are a sinner. And then simply put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Saved from the wrath of God. Saved from the judgment that will fall upon you. It comes from God. In that place called hell on the lake of fire for eternity. God does not want you to go down to hell. And that's why we come out here as gospel preachers. You are being given another opportunity of getting right with God. Of receiving forgiveness for your sins by putting your faith in the Son of God, the Christ, the Chosen One, God's Anointed, the Messiah. You've got to come to Christ to be saved, my friend. There's no salvation outside of Jesus Christ. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have that spiritual and eternal life that can only come through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ? Yes, it says here, I'll just repeat that, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there were, uh, was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is, be which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe, that is Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, lying in a manger. When they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. 
I mean, eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child. His name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the days of her purification according to the Lord Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. That is, the Lord's anointed. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. You see, salvation is found not in a man-made religion. It's found in a person. The person of the Christ, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one that wants to be your saviour this hour, my friend. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Salvation is of the Lord. You see, we cannot save ourselves. No matter how hard we try, no matter how many good things we do, we cannot impress God whatsoever. He's only impressed and fully satisfied with the work of Jesus Christ, His beloved Son, the Christ, the one who died upon the cross, God's anointed, the one whom he hath, has all his delight in. There's no one like the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. We ought to lift him up before you as the only one that can save our souls. We have a soul that needs to be saved. We all do. Our souls are going to leave our body the moment we die. Where will you be one second after you die? It's either going to be in heaven if you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your saviour. Or it's going to be down in hell if you've rejected or neglected the person of Christ. The one who is able to be your saviour this other. Will you come to the Lord Jesus Christ? Remember what Simeon said, For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. As I said, salvation is found alone, exclusively in the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you put your faith in him, the one whom to know is life eternal? Here's for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles in the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them, and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. 
Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one, Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asa. She was of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years old. So that's eighty-four years. Which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Israel. I wonder, are you looking for redemption? To redeem something means to buy it back by paying a price. And the price has been paid. It's the precious blood of Jesus Christ when he was crucified for you and for me upon the cross. He said, it is finished. In the original it's tetelestai, or paid in full. The price has been paid for your redemption and mine in the precious blood or by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a lamb without blemish and without spot. The only perfect man died for our sins upon the cross so that you and I could be redeemed. So we could be brought back by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ which he shed for us freely upon the cross in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Israel, in uh, Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover, and when he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew it not. Notice very carefully it says, not his mother and, and not his father and his mother. It says Joseph and his mother knew not of it. You see, the Holy Spirit was very accurate in the record that God gave concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, in all things, but especially in this thing we see. Why couldn't the, the father of the Lord Jesus Christ be Joseph? Because Joseph was a sinner like you and I when they're born in this world. And if the Lord Jesus Christ was born of Joseph and Mary, well then, he also would be a sinner. And therefore, he wouldn't be qualified to die upon the cross for you and for me. But because the Lord Jesus Christ is not a sinner, and because he was born of a virgin, there was no interfer interference with, uh, of a man in this equation. And so the Lord Jesus Christ was born of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon uh, Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Because the Lord Jesus Christ could not be tainted by sin. He's absolutely perfect. He is God in a body. The holy, perfect Son of God. I think of John when he was here. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. You see, there's only one perfect man. 
And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Never before and never again will there be a perfect man walking the face of the earth, my friend. We only see that perfect man in the person of Jesus Christ. Yes, so Joseph and his mother knew not of it. They didn't realize that he wasn't with the company. He wasn't with the uh, people that were with them as they traveled, as they traveled back home. But they supposing him to have been in the company went a day's journey and sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. They went, they went, they went for a day's journey and then they thought, oh, we better have a look for the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is he? And so they looked for him among their relations and that, and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. So they were looking for the Lord Jesus Christ, who they thought was with them. But in reality, he wasn't with them, traveling back home with them. And it came to pass that after three days, so it basically took them three days to find the Lord Jesus Christ. They found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both healing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought this only. And don't forget, Joseph is not the father of the Lord Jesus. The father in heaven is. And so she made a mistake. She said, Thy father and I have sought thee sorry. She was wrong. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Why are you looking for me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? No, didn't you know that I must be about my father's business? In other words, the obvious place for me to be would be the temple. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Yes, the only perfect man, the Lord Jesus Christ, can be your saviour this hour, my friend. He said, Come unto me, all you that labour and are heavy laden, and, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Come unto me, all you that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I hope you're feeling the burden of sin right now, my friend. And you're coming under conviction of sin, righteousness, and judgment. There's judgment ahead for those who die without the Lord Jesus Christ as their Saviour. But I'm here to tell you, but God commendeth his love toward us. That means he displayed his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Again, what do you need to do? You need to come in repentance toward God, change your mind, agree with God that you are a sinner, and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul be saved. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. It's either heaven or hell. What will it be for you? It's all determined by what you do 
with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I appreciate that. If you're interested in this, look me up. YouTube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great night.